This is a reverse of string. In Java, the basic principles should apply to most programming languages, especially curly brace ones. So the first way we're going to do this is um, the most like generic typical way is to convert a string to a sequence of characters and then convert that back to a string because a real string in most systems should be immutable which means unchangeable so we need to pluck out those characters plug them into something that is changeable some type of buffer and then extract that to get back a true genuine string again extract that back to a string so anyway without further ado we're gonna need a character array we'll call it care array appropriately and we'll initialize this to the length of our string which is right here there's 31 characters in it from the capital A to the period and then for each of those characters we'll start off with start off at the end of the array as you can see right here we're already duplicating ourselves so to keep our code dry we'll get rid of this and we'll create a length variable come up here and get rid of it right here too and then we can store it in an integer called length that way we only have to compute it one time so now the, our string length is stored in that variable we're starting a new sequence of characters oops yeah that's right okay called a uh, care array and it will be the same length as our string and then down here we'll want to start at the end of the length actually this should have a new in front of it so to start at the end of the length this gives us the count of characters the one base count and we need the zero based index so we're going to knock one off of there and since we're starting at the end we want to continue to iterate while we're above or equal to the zeroth element and each iteration we're going to go down by one so what we'll do is the care array the length minus the index will get the character at the index of the string. The one problem right here is that the length will be equal to 31 and then i will be equal to 30 so this will start us at index 1 of the care array but we actually want to start at index 0 so we'll take one more off of that and that should work so we'll check it out then this will implicitly convert the character array back to or into a string so there you can see all your base would belong to us backwards starting at the capital A going all the way to the period no duplicate or missing letters it's a good sign come back and go over that one more time so we started a class we uh, created a constant string or we already had it but we would create it otherwise we come in here to the main method and we compute the strings length store that in the length variable create a new character sequence same length as a string then we start a for loop a finite loop and we initialize it to the last element in the array right here the length would be equal to right there we basically came back to right there we start in that we work our way back through the string subtracting one off of the iterator until we get all the way here to the zeroth element then we bounce out because we populated our character array and we print it to the screen so that's pretty much the general way to do it in just about any language now we're going to try a little bit more specialized creating a string buffer actually a string builder the string buffer 
in Java is the same as a string builder, but it's synchronized for say multi-threading. Change the name of this one to string builder. We'll save this as reverse string builder. All right. So we'll go ahead and compute the length again into an integer length. So we've got that. Now we need a string builder. We'll just call it string builder. And we'll go ahead and set the initial capacity to the same size as our original string. And then we'll come down here. And what we're going to do is similar. We're going to start at the end. And we're going to work our way back until we get the zeroth element. And then we're going to bounce out of it and we'll, we should have our string computed. So this time we'll use a while loop and since the length of course counts will start us after the last element we'll go ahead and bring down the length and we'll say while well, that's greater than or equal to zero we'll go ahead and hit this loop and while we're in here we're going to the string builder's empty on the first iteration so we can append String builder append um, the string the character at the current value of the length variable. And that should build it up. Let's check it out. This will implicitly convert the convert the string builder to a string and display it. There it is, all your base are belong to us. Got the capital A through the period. Alright, go back over that one more time real quick. We got the class, we got the string, we got the main method, we got the length computed. We have a new string builder object with its capacity initialized to the length of the string we're dealing with. Then we come over here, take the length down by one, access this last element first, and while we're above the zeroth element will append this character at this last element starting with the period and then we'll go down by one and the next iteration will be on the S we'll append that and so on all the way down to A then that takes us out of the while statement and we come down here and print it for the last one we'll do an a recursive example This is a huge trade-off right here. Because you barely have to write anything. But there's a little bit of like behind the scenes complexity you have to think about. So in our main method, what we're going to do is just call a recursive method that we're going to set up. And that method's going to continue to call itself and whittle itself down, whittle down um, the contents of the string until it gets down to basically nothing. And then it's going to spin back out of it. And it's going to spit everything back out in the reverse order. So we'll go ahead and embed that in a print line. And we'll call it reverse string and it's going to take a string, it's going to take our string constant, which is unchangeable. And actually that's it for the main method. So then we'll come down here and create our reverse string method. It's going to it's private, it's got to be static context to match our main method since we're not creating an instance. It's going to return a string. 
and it's going to take a string. This lowercase string will represent the local copy of that string. So the first thing we'll do is compute the length because we're going to use that several times. Uh, and we're going to compute the length of this local copy that we're going to be whittling down as we pass it in there. And then we need to set a base case. And a base case in a recursive function is basically when to stop. Otherwise it will just infinitely recurse. So we'll say, since we're basically going to be trying to accomplish the same thing, um, if we're whittling this down one character at a time, it, each time through the, each time it calls itself, it's going to have one less character. We're going to grab a character and chop it out of the string that we send back into itself. So our base case that we want to stop at is once we're at this last character right here. So we'll say that once the string we get, um, once that length of that string is equal to 1, then we know we're at the last character and we'll just return it as the string, as the string that it is. Okay, and otherwise we want to recurse by so what we're going to this is the situation where we're like appending when we're spinning back out so we want to take our current string and we want to get the character at the uh at the end of our current string because say we're halfway through it that character roughly halfway that character would probably be like this R so we'd want to get that um, but the length is one too far we want to get the zero based character so we'll knock one off of that and then we want to append to that the result of the recursion and we're going to send into it the string a substring which will be all but the last character of the current iteration so I'll start at the beginning and then it will go to the length and in particular with the substring in some languages in Java um, it's the zero is the element we want to start at so that would be this a and then the length will be we it goes up to and not including this element so if we want to do length um, that would work out perfect actually normally because it will that would actually be like one of the few times that length would end up effectively being zero based but we actually want to chop off that last character so we're gonna do that and that should return a string Let's see how it works. Got some errors. What is it? Uh, length equals one's not a statement. For length, error not a statement. We forget turn string dot length. For it's supposed to be an if. There it is, capital A through the period. So that worked. That's good. That's the recursive version. But there are some trade offs by going this route. I mean, it's less code, and you sort of have to twist your mind. A little bit to kind of like figure what's going on 
Um, but if you multiply it, if you actually like get into something more than just a single statement or single string, like you can actually start to see how much slower recursion is. And there's different trade-offs you should think about in each language. So like syntax syntactic sugar like this, this plus sign that's a concatenation operator. Um, it's nice and simple looking and it can take all sorts of primitives and convert them to a string automatically so it's just like it's really nice to do right out of the gate like this but it's also considered pretty slow. So another option would be to take this character convert it to a string and then use the concat instead and that still works so it's like well that one looks a little bit uglier but it should be faster so what I did was ahead of time because it'd be a lot more typing I went in and created some timed versions of these. So here's the recursive timed. Um, basically just to kind of run through the format of what's going on with all this mess. Decimal format just adds a comma to comma separate some digit groups for one of the results. Um, we rename the class. We have our regular string variable. This counts how many calls, how many times our recursive function gets called just to put it in perspective and this is more details to do with the decimal format actually instantiating a variable for it and here's the main function begins both of these lines are just setting up the variables for that counter for the timer to time the function and right here is basically what we called in our main method in the last recursive function we're gonna recall this reserve reverse string again and it's gonna run 10,000 times you'll have to have Java 7 or higher to use this digit separator otherwise you'd have to remove that this makes it a little bit clearer so this is just gonna this doesn't really matter it's just going through 10,000 times and calling this and each time it calls this it's gonna call itself 31 times so it's effectively calling itself 30 31,000 times um, or 310,000 times bad at math okay finish and then immediately after, this is a, some people call it a micro benchmark. Um, it's not something you want to like use as like hard evidence of how fast anything is. There's different optimizations, but basically we're just doing this string thing and we're just doing it 10,000 plus times. So you, if you use a micro benchmark like this, you don't want to really do anything more complicated. I'm not doing anything more than the bare minimum that I have to in between these. So I do the start time, run this a bunch and then bam do the finish time and then do all my calculations outside of it as far as like formatting the results and everything so anyway and that's what all this is you'll see that in a minute but anyway we get down here to our recursive function and it's pretty much the same as you can see we I threw in this calls count thing that counts the calls that's negligible um, with a modern computer it's so fast you it's difficult to even tell the difference whether or not that's included so that's nice um, we're calculating our length we have our base case to stop at one and then down here it's converting the character to string concat da 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 alright so anyway let's go and check that out we'll go into the time folder and we'll do a reverse string recursive time dot java compile that there's a few errors on line 24 Oh, I started to add some stuff to this that I never finished, so, oh well. Okay. We'll run that. So, 10,000 times, ran in 92 milliseconds, and that's a total of 310,000 times. I like to run it about 10 times just to make sure. And we'll get like an average, basically round it off to, you know, 10 or 20 milliseconds. So it's at about 100 milliseconds, which is about a uh, tenth of a second to run 10,000 times. So that's actually pretty quick.
and then we can go down here and we'll just um, go ahead and copy that paste it and then uh, comment these out and we'll pit back in that concatenation operator take out all this extra junk see which one's faster String, da, da, da. save that compile it what do we got 38 it's going off of line 38 too many of these Right, a little over. Let's see if we get that over and over. Looks like it's about 20 milliseconds, 25 milliseconds slower on average. So it's a big deal if you're running big inputs and a lot of recursions. That is um, basically tacking on an extra 30% time. So there's a definite trade off there that you know yeah we don't have to have like a string right here we could pass it a number or whatever it looks a little bit prettier um, but that's the difference with that there's we could also do a string builder here instead of this so I'll go ahead and copy these lines say return a new this is actually going to generate a new object each time through and we'll initialize the object with that um, that first part of the, of the string and then we'll append to that so we'll say append append this bottom part I think this will implicitly convert back to a string. We'll check it out. Where is it at? There it is. Error um, cannot be converted to string, so we do need to manually tell it to string. And then we'll run that. And it's about the same as the concatenation operator, pretty much. But there's so many variations you can do. So right here, it's um, it's already at, it's at a character, and then we're appending. So one thing we could do too is just take this out of here, and instead of letting the constructor deal with that, which it has to go through, sort of like this polymorphic check and stuff, we can just try appending letting it do like a really basic construction append that on just like we did the second half and see if that changes it well, maybe slightly faster maybe and one thing to do if the times are really close to each other is to come up here and set this uh, the amount of iterations blow it out so that it takes some time to actually like we'll do a million iteration we'll do 10 million and recompile it and this should take at least a few seconds I may have done too many here and put it down to a million probably better to just like work it up slowly let that run for a second I think it runs about a little over 30 seconds for 10 million in the meantime um, 
I also did time versions of the other ones. So we have the string builder timed and the just the regular where is it? Yeah, reverse string timed. All the same deal with these. Um, this one I plugged in the time count into a constant variable and then did that maybe a little bit better practice, but same basic principles. And then here's the builder one timed. And those are the iterative, they're the non recursive ones. Let's see what's going on over here. All right, 49 seconds, 310 million calls. So, anyway, let's go ahead and uh, run that with the 1 million. Let's see, it should be a lot quicker. Probably just a few seconds. Yeah, so that was just five seconds. We'll go ahead and run it several times. Make sure the Java virtual machine's warmed up. All that kind of stuff. We're getting about five seconds. There's a thousand milliseconds in a second. So anyway, we run this a million times. The recursive version, it takes about five seconds. So let's go ahead and try out the uh, the builder version, recursive timed. Builder timed. Sixty two milliseconds. Let's make sure we're running that a million times too. Uh, string builder, we're only running that a hundred thousand, so go ahead and set that to a million, see what we get. Recompile it. About a third of a second. It's a lot faster than five seconds. Okay, and let's um, compare that here. We have that one set to a million. This was our, oh wait, this recursive. Okay, this is our standard character array version. The very first version we looked at set to a million. Let's run that. hundred milliseconds so it's three times faster than than even the string builder iterative one so there's lots of variations you can do and as you saw in this one it's like even though it looks like there's extra junk going on which in some regard there is this you know character to strings going on um, we're calling this concat operation it looks more long-winded and common sense might make us think that you know this is going to take a little bit longer but after all said and done with any virtual machine optimizations it actually doesn't so the only thing you can do is really try it out profile it um, go with the simple and readable way first and don't try and optimize until that profiling justifies it and I think that about does it for how to reverse a string